report on this computer. Amen. Hallelujah. Tonight is the first day of March in 2023. And this is New Beginnings. No, it isn't. This is Wednesday Night Bible Study. Yes. Amen. Uh, but it's New Beginnings for some people. But for us, it's Wednesday Night Bible Study. New Beginnings is Thursday. So I guess I'm already there. Y'all know how I am about these Bible studies. I be thinking about them all the time. But it is Wednesday Night Bible Study. It's Open Forum with Pastor Harrell. And we have two questions tonight. The first question came from Sister Diana, uh, and she wanted to know why we don't talk a lot about Mary. And so we're going to delve into that question. And the other question was how to discuss how important it is to wait on the Lord. Amen. So we'll start with uh, Mary. And Mary is the mother of Jesus. So we're going to talk about some false doctrine of the Catholics about Mary. No human being, no human is to be worshipped. The only person that gets worshipped is God. But the Catholics worship Mary. Mary was a saint, which is a sanctified one, just like you, Sister Diana. If you got the Holy Spirit in you, you're a sanctified one too. We're all saints. We're, we're no longer sinners, we're saints. This, I'm St. Doris. St. Doris! <laughs> We're all saints, sanctified one. We have the Holy Spirit in us. Mary was a saint. Uh, Peter was a saint. John, all of Saint John, all the, the other, the apostles, they worship apostles too. We don't worship any of them. You know, they're highly uh, uh, looked upon. And um, so another fallacy. So, so we only worship God, okay? Uh, Mary had the, the high favor of being chosen by God to be the version spoken of in uh, Micah uh, that uh, the, the, the Savior would come through a version. She had the high favor to be chosen by God to be that young lady. And I believe, I'm not sure what age she was, but someone said around 14. And that would be pretty good, around 14, 15. It was nothing to get married at 14, 15 back in those days. <laughs> and so uh, so she, she just a, another woman, just like us. She was filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, she brought, brought forth the Savior. So that's a highly favored position. And she was very humble uh, to receive that. <clears throat> but she was just a person like us. She's not to be worshiped. She is the mother of God. And... Um, so now I know there have been some sightings and stuff. I don't know. You know, I can't say I wasn't there. I can't say I don't want to say what it, people had. But still, no matter if they saw what they saw, people see all kinds of stuff. She still was just a regular woman. In fact, I'll show you what Jesus called her a regular woman. So let me write that down because we don't want to lose that. Um, those that, because as the Holy Spirit gives me these, uh, we'll go to them. Do the will. Okay, I got that. My father. Okay. So, uh, so one of the other errors is that she was sinless. Mary was not sinless. Mary had a mother, a human mother, and a human father. So she was not sinless. Again, just like us. Another one is that she stayed a virgin. No, she did not stay a virgin. She had other children uh, with Joseph, her husband. Now, Joseph did not touch her until after Jesus was born. And who knows how long it was after Jesus was born. But they did have children together. That meant they had uh, sexual intercourse as a husband and wife. And she bore other children. One of them was James, the brother of Jesus. So we'll look at his, uh, and I believe he had sisters too. But we'll look at uh, the, uh, the, I know one was James and the other, I don't want to misquote his name, but I'll look it up. So Jesus is, and they're half, half brothers and sisters, because we know that God, the Holy Spirit is the, uh, Jesus was made uh, incarnation through the Holy Spirit. So he had no human father. So that makes Joseph his stepfather. Amen. And he was chosen for a particular reason too. 
So, um, so let's get, get rid of that one. And so now let's go to Luke and let's look at, so Mary is highly venerated uh, as, a, as a, a woman because God chose her to bring forth um, Jesus. But she, and she is a saint, but she's no more of a saint than any of the rest of us sanctified women. Just means we have the Holy Spirit. Uh, she is not to be worshiped. We worship no one but God, but Mary is not God. Mary is not our intercessor. People pray for Mary to intercede on their behalf, Peter to intercede, Saint this, Saint that, Saint this, Saint that. Their statues, those little statues can become idols. And there's only one intercessor. And anybody who knows who that is? I'm waiting. Jesus. The Holy Jesus. Spirit. The Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Jesus. No, not the Holy Spirit. It's, it's Jesus. Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus is the only intercessor. There's no other person who intercedes. Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us. Mary does not pray for us. Mary is in heaven, ain't thinking about us. Just like everybody else, every other human that went to heaven day is so happy to be around God's throne. But Jesus ever liveth to make intercession for us. Amen. So Jesus is the intercessor. He ever liveth to intercede for us, the intercessor. So, so don't pray to Mary to be interceding for you because she can't hear you because uh, uh, she, she's not God. So I want to look at, in Luke, actually, I want to look at, um, okay, the birth, well, okay. So Luke uh, 1 and uh, Luke 1, this is where you'll find 28, that, uh, well before that, uh-huh. Yeah, but right there, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to show you here 24, because this uh, was Elizabeth. See, Elizabeth uh, bore John the Baptist. John the Baptist, Elizabeth and Mary were cousins, okay? So Jesus and John the Baptist were kin. They were cousins. John the Baptist was born six months before Jesus. So let's look at that. In 24, after those, and after those days, his wife, talking about Zechariah, Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months. Nobody even knew she was pregnant for five months. Yeah. Say, I see your hand, Sister Jeanette. Saying, thus has the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. And in the sixth month, uh, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin. So this is the sixth month is Elizabeth's six months pregnancy that the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came into her, unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. She was the most blessed woman among women. There's no other woman on this earth who was more blessed then Mary, because she brought forth Jesus. Only she, she held that place, but she's not God and we don't worship her. Verse 29. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Now, when it says his father, David, 
it means the lineage of Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, down that lineage came Jake, uh, Obed, Jesse, and uh, David. They always talk about the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, you know. So, uh, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob, how long? Forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be? seeing I know not a man, which means I'm a virgin. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall <laughs> overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. You see that? The Son of God, because no man, Joseph is a stepfather. Jesus is the only, that's called the incarnation, the incarnation. That means God in man. And so, and, and 36, he says, and behold, thy cousin. So here you see that Mary and Elizabeth were cousins. She also has conceived a son in her old age. This, and this is her sixth month with her, who is called barren. And with God, for with God, what? Nothing shall be impossible so it is one of the great miracles that mary could see by the holy spirit because with god when god got a plan he does it and he, he he's the only one that can do it and mary said behold the handmaid of the lord be it unto me according to your word and the angel departed from her and so um and so that's uh that's where the, the Holy Spirit, uh, the, the angel Gabriel came to Mary. Now, let me take Jeanette's hand first, and then I'll take Deacon Dean's hands. I see two hands up. Okay. So, Jeanette, your hand first. No, Pastor, I found it. I didn't know where you were in Luke, but when you said 29, oh. I started looking. I found it. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry and and you, you started at, at, at Luke 1, and what was the first verse? It was uh, 24. Okay. Thank you. And base, yeah, and that's basically just to show you uh, that Elizabeth, the, the mother of John the Baptist, and Mary were cousins. And that made J John the Baptist and Jesus cousins. Amen. Amen. And Deacon, did you have your hand up? Yes, I, I have a question. It's about uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 3 and 4 when we get there. Is it? Revelation chapter 21, verse 3 and 4. It's about something altogether different. Okay, so that'll be the third question. Let me write it down. Revelation 21, 3 and 4? Yes. All right. Okay, so, so that'll be the third question. Amen. All right. So now, uh, so, so now we saw that uh, Isaiah uh, prophesied it, Micah prophesied it, and there's a third one, Jose, I think, but I'm not sure, about the virgin birth, because that would be a sign. A virgin's going to give a birth. And we just saw where the angel Gabriel came and, and uh, spoke to Mary and said, you're going to have, you're highly favored. God has chosen you among all women. There'll never be another woman as high as Mary, even though Eve is called the mother of all living, she was not highly favored, only Mary. So she is highly favored, but she is not to be worshiped because she's just a woman. Amen. A woman that was chosen to bring forth the son of God. Okay, so let's go to, uh, let's go now to look at Mary. Now, as she got the, the, as his mother, the opportunity, the privilege and the honor to raise Jesus. But I want to show you what she said about him. Uh, <laughs> uh, ever. Okay, so let's now go to uh, John 2. So Mary and Joseph raised Jesus as his mother and father, as a human mother and father. John, big John 2. And when it came time for Jesus, to um, 
for Jesus to do his, to step into his uh, ministry as, as far as bringing forth miracles, his mother knew it was time for him and uh, he didn't. So she, as his mother, uh, kind of provoked him. This is your time. And he said, woman, not in a negative way. That's just how they spoke. Uh, it's not my time, you know, but let's look at that. So John 2, and we're going to go to uh, verse 5. So here's some good advice from the mother of Jesus. John 2, and the third day, verse 1, and the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. Galilee. And the mother of Jesus, who we know is Mary, was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. She said that to him. And Jesus said unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, whatever, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. So she actually, and he went on forth and did his first miracle, the, the, the making of water into wine. Before that, he taught. He called his disciples and he taught and he cast out demons and laid hands on the sick. But the first miracle was prompted by his mother because she knew it was his time. She was she was a human, but she was still his mother because he because Jesus was fully human and fully God. So she knew she kept a close eye on him. Uh, as he was growing up, there were certain things that he did. And the Bible says that she just was silent and she she watched this. She pondered about it. she watched him. She 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 looked at him very closely because she had the honor of raising this son of God up. So she raised him up very good. And so she knew it was his time. <laughs> And he said, it's, it's not my time yet. But she knew, and he went on and obeyed his mother too, didn't he? And did that. But the key, the thing I want y'all to get here is in verse five. His mother said, just like she said unto the, those people, she said the same thing to us. Whatsoever he says unto you, all these red letters, do it. Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Amen. Now I want to take you and show you in uh, uh, Jesus's brothers and sisters. So this debunks the, 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 the error that Mary had no, uh, uh, was a virgin. And first of all, they said she was without sin. So that's a lie. The, the only sinless person is Jesus Christ. Amen. So uh, let's see the brothers. Well, I guess I can show you there in that same scripture there. Okay, let's see here. Who is my... Now, at this time, when I'm going to show you, Jesus was... Um, he was just getting ready to go to the cross. So he was very, very in a whole nother realm. I mean, the closer he got to going to uh, the cross, the the deeper he got, deeper spiritually he got. And so he, he had even told his, his disciples, I have meat, a, a drink to drink and meat to eat that you don't even know of. Because they say, ain't you hungry by now? Aren't you hungry? He, he, you know, the, the closer you get, the, you know, when you, you just eat food, this natural food is nothing. So this is one of those times when he was preaching. So we're going to Matthew 12. And I want to show you where uh, his brothers and his mother, maybe his sisters too, I don't know, but they didn't mention women too much. Mary was one of the women that got mentioned a lot because she's uh, Jesus's mother. So it's going to be Matthew 12. And uh, let's see here. Hmm. Ah, well, he was talking about demons, okay? So he was talking deep, 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 deep. Like I said, the closer he got to going to the cross, he got real deep, like he was running out of time. He knew he had to get real deep. And so here in verse 46, it says, 
while he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood outside, desiring to speak with him. Then one of them said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand outside, desiring to speak with you. They, they, you know, he had been doing all this. And, and so his family, his human family, his mother and his brother and James, not, not uh, James. Uh, uh, in fact, he was the one that wrote James. James was one of his brothers. We had another one too, but I can't think of his name right now. I'll, I'll look it up. Wanted to talk to him. And he answered and said unto him that told him, and this is what Jesus said, who is my mother and who are my brethren? Because he had gotten deep at this time. And he stretched forth his hands toward his disciples and said, behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. So he made a distinction there between his natural mother, which is Mary, and his natural brother, which James and, and I'll probably get the others too, uh, uh, and his disciples who was doing the will of his father. Amen. So it's just like us. We have family members that are not born again. We do. And there's, there are family members. Uh, they, they, whatever they are, their mother, father, sister, brother, kids, whatever. There's, they're ours, but we have brothers and sisters in the Lord, and there's a distinction. And so he made the distinction between his natural mother and brethren and his disciples who does the will of his father. Okay, so that's one After place. His, write... his brother's name, Simon and Jude. Okay, Simon and Jude. Okay, and, and, um, and James is one too, I'm sure. Yes, you you saw that? Is that under your, your thing? Okay, Simon, Jude, and James. And he had sisters too, but I, yeah. you know, they don't they really name girls too much. Simon, Jude, and James. And and in fact, the one in the the, the Jude in the back in the Bible, Jude in the back, that's uh uh, uh Jesus' half brother. Oh. You know where y'all get your benediction from? That's his book. Oh. And James in the back, that's Jesus' brother. And I'll show you where one of that, that James in the back was an unbeliever. He didn't believe his brother was the Messiah until, until he uh, resurrected, I believe. Let's see here. The unbelief of James. I have to show you that. And he's his own brother. And that's easy because um, uh, people that are closest to you, it's, it's just like I got close family members. They don't bit no pay me no attention to it. they just think i'm a regular woman but people that are far off from me they recognize the call of my life where my regular family don't don't recognize it but that's scriptural the bible says a prophet is not without honor except in his own household so people that are close to you they don't see it they don't see it because they think you're just you you know but uh so that's scripture so that's that's nothing to uh okay so let's look at i want to show you so those are the three names. So whenever you read Jude and whenever you read James in the back, those are Jesus's half brothers. So I've got to find, I, I want you to see that, G, that James was an unbeliever. Uh, let me find that scripture. Jesus. So thank God for these Googles. <laughs> okay, let's go to. Uh, well, let's go to Matthew. I've got two scriptures here. I don't know if this is the one. Matthew 13 55. 13 55. Okay, here we go. This is a good one. I'm glad we went here. So this is Matthew 13. He names his brothers. Uh, let's start in uh, 53. 
Bubble, there you go, to 58. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was coming to his own country, that's where he was born, he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said, whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Talking about Joseph. Uh, is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and, and, and Jose, uh, Joseph, and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Which then has this man all these sins? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said to him, to them, a prophet is not without honor, except in his own country and in his own house. And he did, he was not able to do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. So here you have it. This is probably the best scripture to see that, um, where people look at Jesus, he say, well, wait a minute, ain't just Jesus the son of the carpenter, which is, we know is Joseph, the, his stepfather, and isn't his mother called Mary? And his brothers, there's four brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, or Jude, and his sisters, are they not all with us? So he had sisters, they didn't name them, just like they didn't name a lot of women. He said, wherefore did this man do all these things? And they, was, they were offended. In other words, they didn't recognize uh, him, who he was. And, uh, but Jesus said unto them, a prophet or a righteous person is not without honor. The, the, the righteous man has honor from other people, but not from those close to him. They don't recognize the call of God. The, I'm telling you now, the people in my family, they don't recognize, you You may recognize the call of God on me, but not in my own family, don't. They don't, they, they think I'm jiving or crazy or something, I don't know what they think. <laughs> but it's biblical right there. And because of that, uh, the Bible said he did not many works there because of their unbelief. Their unbelief, that's why a lot of times I, uh, uh, is is better for somebody else to talk to my family because they 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 just won't receive from me. They just don't believe. I don't know. You know, it's just what it is. If they did it to Jesus, surely they're going to do it to us. So there it is, right there. That's probably the best scripture for you. I just gave you the one where it says his mother and, and brother was outside, wanted to talk to him, and Jesus said, "Who is my brother? My mother, my brothers?" And here this one, and out of the mouths of two or three witnesses. And uh, Deaconess wants to give us probably out of the Amplified. Okay, uh, no, I, not to amplify, but oh. I, it was another scripture, Matthew 10, 34 through 39, too. Okay, so let's look at that one. Matthew 10, 34 through 39. And 16. So here we see that um, they, his family didn't believe, except Mary. Mary knew. Mary knew. His brothers didn't until after he rose. Um, go to that one, Deacon, Deaconess, and read it. Okay. And it reads as follows. Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter and against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foe shall be, be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Amen. So it, it's just, uh, 
there's a, a, a difference between being your natural brothers and sisters and your spiritual brothers and sisters, basically. Amen. And uh, oftentimes, and many times, the, the uh, natural brothers and sisters and the spiritual person in their house, there's conflict because two different gods now, two different spirits, because the natural person still has the spirit of the devil. But the spiritual person has the spirit of God now. So there's automatic conflict. That's just the way it is. So, uh, okay. So, uh, so did that answer your question, Sister Diana? Okay, yeah. Mute. Do, uh, I have the doctor on the phone, so I'm going to have to step out for okay. a minute. Okay, thank you. Okay. And so, uh, so the thing is, we worship no human being. Only God is to be worshipped. And that's one of the doctrines of Catholicism. They worship the saints. Uh, they, they highly, I, I think of Mary as, as highly too, but I don't worship her. I know that she's just a, just a woman, you know, that God chose. Uh, she was highly favored among women. The most highly favored among women was Mary because she was chosen to be uh, the mother of uh, the son of God. So praise God. Then uh, let me look at Deacon Dean's uh, one first, and then we'll look at the weight on the Lord. That was Revelations. 20, Revelation. Chapter 21, verse 3 and 4. Revelation 21, <clears throat> verse 3 and 4. Revelation 21, verse 3 and 4. And this is talking about a new, the new heaven and the new earth. When actually what's going to happen is <clears throat> this earth that we live on is going to be destroyed. It's probably going to be destroyed by nuclear fire because the last time it was destroyed by water and God said uh, he won't, he, that's what that rainbow is about. He will not destroy the earth. And, and both times it's going to be destroyed because of the wickedness of man is great. But it, it, he won't destroy the earth by water anymore, but by fire. So when the what what we're going through is right now we're coming up uh, we're in the end the end time we're in the beginning of sorrows we're coming up on the great tribulation where there's seven years of great tribulation but we I believe we're right in the they're coming up on it and I believe that the church will go through the first three and a half years of the tribulation then the antichrist is going to appear on the earth that'll be the the second uh uh, three and a half years of the tribulation. And then there's going to be Armageddon, uh, the final war between uh, uh, Satan. He, you know, he, uh, he, he's going to try to fight God to the end. But anyway, he's going to be destroyed and then he's going to be cast into the lake of fire. Then there's going to be a new heaven and earth. And, um, and that's what this is talking about. The new heaven and the new earth. Not the heaven where God is, but uh, uh, new, uh, you know, when God created, he created heaven and the earth, heaven meaning the atmosphere up there, uh, sun, moon, stars, and all that, and where the, and the angels and all this, even right now, demonic stuff is in, in the spiritual realm, and then we know what the earth is, but this earth is going to be destroyed, <clears throat> and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, this is John the Revelator, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, and the former things are passed away. And uh, so this is talking about, um, well, New Jerusalem is that new city, 
there's, there's also going to be a thousand year reign on the earth. And, and that's where the Jerusalem's going to come down here and, and God's going to tabernacle with men. But the truth of it is God is already tabernacling with men. God is already right now uh, tabernacling with men. He is entered into uh, the saints, the sanctified one. It is Christ in us, the hope of glory. But this is talking about the final end. This is after everything. After the old earth has passed away, and, and, and this is the final uh, ending of it all. I'm going to look in my... Um, um, in my study Bible here and see what it says. The tabernacle of God, the presence of God will be with his people and he will forever dwell with them. And really, if you are truly, truly born again, if you're really born again, you don't have to wait for that because he is with us and in us. Those that are truly born again and filled with the Holy Spirit right now because the holy spirit is god and he tabernacles in us which means he lives in us he dwells in us if we let him the word is supposed to see that the word dwell is what we need to look at dwell means to live so god said he wants his word to dwell in us and he will dwell in us and but what happens with Christians is God is in us, but we won't let him dwell. We won't let him have his way. We too busy with the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes to let God. So we quench the Holy Spirit, we grieve him. But when you, when you just let go and let God have his way in you and his word have his way in you, then he dwells in you and that's where life is. So actually, before this, before all of this ends right now, God is tabernacling right now in his saints, those that are born again and have surrendered to him. And it is absolute bliss. By bliss, I mean it's ecstatic. It is absolutely wonderful that God dwells in us. And here in verse four, There'll be, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, nor crying. So none of this down here. See, even right now with God tabernacling in us, we are in the world, but we're not of it, but we're still in it. So we see a lot of uh, this, a lot of sorrow. So we still cry, a lot of death. We still cry over death, uh, pain, but all that stuff, when you, when you go to heaven, all that stuff that happens to you down here, there's no remembrance of it. You don't remember it. So, but you can enjoy God right here. He is tabernacling with us right now. Amen. So, uh, and I'm going to show you that in, uh, let me, it's in Corinthians, but I got to find it. Amen. So, did that, is that what you wanted, Deacon D? Does that answer your question? Uh, yes. Okay. So go with me to 1 Corinthians 3. That's a good question. 1 Corinthians 3. So we, we can enjoy God right now. We don't have to wait. That's, it's such a good question that is very important because we don't have to wait to go to heaven to enjoy God. Yeah, there's still this mess down here. Because there won't be none of that up there. We'll just be absolute bliss. B-L-I-S-S. -S. I mean, whoo, hallelujah. Oh, God. We'll find out why we was created. But we don't have to wait to get to heaven to experience God. So in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17, somebody read that. I'll read it, Pastor. Okay, 1 Corinthians 3. 16 and 17. Yes. Don't you, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred 
and you together are that temple. Amen. So right now, see, right now. we're the temple or the tabernacle. It's the same thing. Uh, know ye not that you are the temple of God? See, when the Holy Spirit comes in you, God dwells in you. Lives, God lives in you, literally. This is not a figmentation of our imagination. You know, this is not mental ascending. This is a real, live, literal, just like the Holy Spirit came in Mary and, and, and uh, impregnated her. He comes in us to live with us, to walk with me, Lord, walk with me. See, the Holy Spirit in us guides us, leads us, convicts us of, I mean, he, oh my God. God, don't get me started up in here about that Holy Ghost. <laughs> he is the best thing besides saying yes to Jesus and becoming born again that ever happened to mankind because it's God in us. I can show you where all three of them come in. And y'all might not be able to handle that one. I'm going to show you the fullness of God. Amen. In us. Because there's Remember, there's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I will show you where all three come to dwell in us. It's in John, but I got to find it. Um, we will come. Okay, okay. Hallelujah. I read this so many, the Holy Spirit showed this to me so many years ago. So we're the temple of God. How do you defile the temple of God? Sin. Just doing all kind of stuff. Ooh, don't defile. If you're God's temple, I mean, treat yourself just like you are. You're holy. You're holy, but we're not to be worshiped. You know, we're just, we're just, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. The treasure is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Go with me to John 14. <clears throat> this is, I, I, that's why I love uh, open forum. You can uh, hit a lot of things. John 14. Okay. So here in John 14, I want to show you something. Verse 15. John 14, 15. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and shall be in you. Now, this was... The Holy Spirit was going to come and dwell in us after Jesus was uh, crucified on the cross and he ascended to heaven. Remember when he ascended, he mm -hmm. sent back the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit yes, came. Thank you, Lord. After Jesus. Yes, yes, Lord. And he came to live in us mm -hmm. and he's the spirit of truth. He came to be our comforter, our guide. He came to guide us in this world, but it's He's God. See, that's why you have to understand the, the Godhead. Yeah, Trinity, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but the concept of a three-in-one God is the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit. The Word is Jesus. And so here, the Holy Spirit, after Jesus left and, and, and uh, got our salvation for us, we have to receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. Then he said, uh, now we can, we qualified to receive the Holy Spirit. Then he comes to dwell with us forever. He's the one that sanctifies us. He's the one that's the power of God that helps us to not sin. Without the Holy Spirit, you know, you can be born again and just struggling. I'm struggling. I'm coming up the rough side of the mountain. I don't want to come up the rough side of the mountain. <laughs> it may be rough out here, but God, if you let him dwell in you, let him live in you. Let him have his way in you. He will guide you in all ways of righteousness. So you don't have to suffer like other people and other Christians do. God said, trust me. Let the Holy Spirit abide in you. 
let him live. If he says, don't do something, don't do it. If you say, do something, do it. <laughs> I mean, really, that's, that's how he lives with us. Okay, so here you see where Jesus said, keep my commandments and the Holy Spirit will come and live in you. Then he says in verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world sees you no more, but you see me because I live, you shall live also. And, in, and that day you shall know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you. He that has my commandment. Now here's the, here's the thing y'all, right here in verse 21. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves shall be loved, and he that loves me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself unto him. Judah said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus said, answered and said, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father, now check this out, will love him and we, you already got the Holy Spirit. We, who's left? The Father and Jesus. We will come unto him and make our abode with him. So now that's the fullness. The Holy Spirit, the Father, and Jesus, all of them. One, it's only one God, you know, but all wants to live in us, wants to dwell in us, wants to happen. So that's that tabernacle that in Revelation 21 that Deacon D brought up. And, but you don't have to wait to, to, to get to heaven uh, for God to tabernacle. Right now, right now in his presence is fullness of joy. The problem is the teaching is wrong and we, we can't see it. Oh, we, we, we've served God with our mind. But I'm telling you that God is literally, if you have the Holy Spirit, literally in you. And if you keep his commandments, literally the fullness of God. So God wants to dwell in us. If, remember, what, remember what Paul said after a while? At one time, Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am. The thing I want to do, I don't. The thing I don't want to do, I do. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? And he went from that to, it is no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. He said, it, it is Christ literally in me living i know that uh, i read a thing about mother teresa and mother teresa said uh, you know people say all kind of bad things about saints christians you know anybody that love god you're gonna be you're gonna be hated you're gonna be talked about and they say all this stuff and thing but i read a thing about her and, and she said they said how could you love so many children and you know they were all like they were and she said when i looked at them all i saw was the eyes of jesus and because what it was she was so devoted to, to god she had just given herself so to god she had died to who she was and so god was able to live in her and it was not her i'm telling y'all how this works it was christ in her that was looking at these children if we could just understand, and it's just not for Mother Teresa. It's for all of us. If we love God, we should die to self. So see, that's when God works in you, when it's no longer you. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. So this tabernacle among men, this is a wonderful, wonderful um, question. If we could just let God sweat. Know ye not. That you are the temple of God. And that the Holy Spirit is you. See, look at look at this again. Look at John 14. This is how he used to be. Verse 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world, that's unbelievers, cannot receive because it sees him not. Talking about the world. 
neither knows him, but this is what he's talking about, his, his own. You know him for he dwells with you and shall be in you. See, there's a difference with the Holy Spirit dwelling with you and being in you. See, when he's in you, that makes you the tabernacle of God. You're the temple of God when he's in you. But you, you can't get him in you be, until your heart is right. Your heart has to be right. See, uh, 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 to be born again is a gift from the for the uh, unbelievers. You know, you don't have to do nothing for that except to believe. And then you become a believer. And then, you know, God starts working with you and you should sh do your best to, to, to love God. You know, do your best. And then he, he, Jesus said, if you love me, what, what's his qualification? W what is the proof, y'all, from this scripture here in John 14, 15? What is the proof that a man loves God? The proof is right there in John 14, 15. What, so what is it? What's the proof? According to Jesus, not according to Doris. Keep his commandment. Keep That's his it. commandment. That's what he said. If you love me, keep my commandments. So many Christians say they love God, love God. They don't keep his commandments. So in, in Jesus' eyes, you don't love him. Maybe you love him a little bit, but you don't love him according to what he said. And, and, and then I will pray to the Father, and he'll give you another comforter that may abide with you. He's with you. He's with all of us. But he shall be in you, abiding in you, living in you, dwelling in you. Then he goes even deeper down here in 23. And this is deep as it gets, y'all. Jesus asked him and said, if a man loved me, he will keep my words. What did, his, what did Jesus' blessed mother say? Whatever, whatsoever he say to do, do. She's still speaking from the book. Whatever he say to do, do. It's the same thing Jesus said. If a man love me, he'll keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him, the fullness of God in man. My God, that's the best. That's your highest call right there. That's the best a human being can can be but we miss it because we just you know we first of all we don't believe or we we got these things that we want to keep you know all this this stuff defiling so many of us defile the temple of god dip dip defile and with all kind of things and uh we're destroying the temple the temple this is the temple this body this literal body is the temple of god and not only just have our temple i mean our spirit but the spirit of god amen and it, and and if you uh just totally surrender, you can have the fullness of God. And that's not the only thing he wants to abide in you. Anybody know what else God wants to abide in us besides the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Anybody venture to say what else he wants to abide or live in us? The word. The word. There you go. There you go. My word. He wants to, John 17, 7. He wants his word to live in you. That means whatever his word says, do no matter how you feel. And here, then we get up on that question Deaconess had. Where you on the, no matter how you feel, no matter how it seems, looks, no matter what. Let the word live in you. My God, that means let the word have its way. So that's John 17 and 7. So it just flows from one question to another. John 17 and 7. I mean, uh, did I say John 17, 7? Mm. Yeah. John 17. Yes. They Now they have known that all things. Oh, that is wrong right there. If you abide in me, that's not what my John 17 says. 7. <laughs> Wow, sometimes uh, sometimes Google gets it wrong. Let's try John 15, 7. John 15, 7. There you go. Look at this. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you ask what you want and it'll be done unto you. 
but see the word had to live in us. That means whatever the word says in any particular, particular situation and circumstances, you to let the word have its way and you got to let the word live in you. You got to let the word have its do. It's right in you. That means submit yourself to the word of God. No matter what you want to do in the flesh, no matter what you, how it looks, as, forget all that. Let his word abide in you. He said, you have whatever you want. So he wants the Holy Spirit to abide in us. The Father and Himself, the fullness of God to abide in us, and the Word. To and that Word, let's look at that Word. Abide means to live, to have its way, to have fir, full recourse, to be pre preeminence, uh, fir, first, foremost. That's what abide means. Good questions. Okay, so now you said wait on the Lord. How important? Why is it important to wait on the Lord? Deaconess, was that your question? Yes, the importance of, of waiting on the Lord, despite yeah, what boy. we see around the world, what's going on in our personal life, anything, oh, how man. significant that is to wait on the Lord. Well, let's look at while we're here in John, is in 17. The main thing, waiting on the Lord, I'm going to see if I can find it without looking into Google. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, go to John 17, 11. Uh, that's a good one. Well, 14. 14. 11 is good, too. I'll go and read. Word. And now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those which thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. But is verse four, verse uh, fourteen. Always remember this: Je when Jesus is talking to them, he's talking to us, all of those that are born again and that belong to him. I have given them thy word, and the world hates them. Why? Because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. Now look what he said. Now, I pray that you should, uh, I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil that is in the world. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So we're in the world, y'all, when you're born again. But you're not of it anymore. It's, you're of a whole different kingdom. You got a whole different God. The devil used to be our God. Satan used to be our God. Now God's our God. You know, we had uh, we we have natural brothers and sisters, and we have spiritual brothers and sisters. Remember what Jesus said: "Behold, my brother, and my sister, those that do the will of my Father." He, he didn't point to Mary and his brothers. He pointed to his disciples. That's my brothers and sisters. He, he wasn't putting Mary and 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 uh, who are the brothers Simon and Jude and James and that other one down. He wasn't putting them down. He was just saying it's two different things, two different things. Amen. Uh, those of us who have unbelieving sisters and brothers and family members, they still ours, but we have spiritual brothers and sisters too. Amen. And so there's a difference. So. So this is what you have to remember when you're waiting on God. This is a whole nother realm we talking about. We are in the world. And guess what? The world hates us. But we're not of the world. And that's why they hate us. Look what it says here. I have 14. I have given them thy word. And the world hates them. Why? Because they're not of the world. That's why you got a whole different God. Who is the God of this world? Y'all know who the God of this world is? Satan. Devil. The Satan. devil. Yeah. 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 yeah he's the, the devil. God of this world. And he used to be our God. But we're not of the world anymore. We got a different God. So the, that's why the world hates us because we have a different God. So they have animosity to it. They can't stand you. They hate you. 
There it is right there. So that's why you wait on the Lord and, and see, because this is a spiritual thing. We can't see these things, this warfare. God allowed me to remember I told you about, he let me hear, I didn't see, but I heard some serious warfare, feathers and even swords and clanking and stuff. I heard all that right outside my window. I'm just laying in the bed like, la, 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 la. like babe, anybody seen babe, the pig? <laughs> that movie, it was a, was a, this little cute little pig because I, I showed it to my kids when they were little. Uh, yes, ma'am. Well, yeah, you know, baby the pig. I've seen Babe too. So they, they, they have bought Babe the pig and fattened him up, feeding him and Babe the pig. They feed him, they fattened him up for the kill. Yeah. And so I didn't know, we don't know about all this spiritual angels, devils and angels fighting know us all the time. God just allowed me to hear it. I didn't see it, I heard it. Feathers and swords. Clinking. I, I heard it all. It was spiritual. It was, I was in my bedroom. It, was, it wasn't on the ground. It wasn't way up there. It was just up high above it, hovering. And I heard it. I'm just laying in bed like, mm -hmm. I ain't had a care in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and the great was my peace. But see, that's what's going on around us. We don't see it. We don't see it. We're in the world, but we're not of it. We're of another realm now. Amen. But we're still in this world. And so let me, uh, take you here so what and so is this is why we look not at the things that are seen but at the things which are not seen oh boy we had a good bible study it's almost over but second corinthians 4 second corinthians 4 oh my god so you have to wait on the lord because things are happening uh, uh, if, we, if we look at what's going on around us, you know, we, we, we're we no longer of this. You know, the warfare is spiritual. All we see is manifest manifestations. But the warfare is spiritual. Second Corinthians 4 and 18. Oh, boy, let me see here. <laughs> While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. What things are those? The invisible realm. First of all, you have to be aware there's an invisible realm. We're in, we're in the, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're in a whole different realm. For the things which are seen are temporal. Another word for temporal are temporary. But the things which are see, not seen are eternal. In other words, when you Base your life, your decisions on what you see. You're dealing with things that can be changed. Don't base your life. Don't look at the things that are seen because they're just temporary. You give your cares to God and then you wait on the Lord because yeah. he immediately begins to work on it. So don't look at what you see because that's subject to change. That's what the scripture is, is basically saying. Uh, does it amplify, read it different, Deacon? It's subject to change if you pray on it. Yes, let me see. My read, my read the contemporary, which one I got? Uh, yeah, the read the contemporary <laughs> English version. My right, read, read them. things that are seen does not last forever. But yeah. things that are not seen are eternal. That's why we keep our mind on the thing that we cannot see. Hallelujah. Amen. That cannot be That's seen. right right there. That's it right there. Don't be looking at this. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. If you have prayed, see, God hears your prayers and he immediately starts working on it. Immediately. He's just waiting around. You know, there's warfare going on, fighting, fighting, fighting. You can read, I think in Daniel 6 or Daniel 10, you can see the warfare. We just don't have time tonight. Well, we got time. Let's go. Let's let's go there real quick and see this. So write your scriptures down. Let me write this down. Second Corinthians, because see, everything you heard tonight, you need to study. Don't just uh -huh. hear it tonight. And it's late by time. You know, study. So what does the Amplified say, they, uh, Deacon Ness? While I go and look at uh, 
Let me see this. Okay, it says, since we consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen, for the things that are visible are temporal, brief and fleeting, but the things that are invisible are deathless and everlasting. Amen. So when God does something, see, that's why you, you got to get your mind out of this realm, in other words. Set your affections in heavenly places. You're in the world. Yeah, it's a fact we're in this world. We's in it. But we ain't of it. <laughs> when we were of it, that's all we could hold on to. You know, I got to fight my battle. I got to defend myself. I got to, why you do that to me? Why? But we have it no more. We don't fight for battles no more. We have an invisible God who is real. In fact, I'm going to tell y'all something. The invisible is way more real than what we're experiencing because I've experienced the invisible and it's way more vibrant. It's way more. It's like when God showed me what shot, like, show me that and leave me here. I'm kidding. I'm ready to leave everybody, all the children. Why did you show me that and leave me here? And that was just a little touch. Oh my God. Deacon, that you want to say something? Oh, man, no. Oh, okay, so that must have been a hand up from the last time. Right, okay, go with me to Daniel. Oh, okay, go with me to Daniel 10. I think it's Daniel 10, but it might be Daniel 12. But uh, I just, I think I can at least get this to you so you can read it on your own. Um, yeah, it's Daniel 10. So here in Daniel 10, you get a, a chance to look at the spiritual warfare. And... Um, so I'm going to read it real fast. It's Daniel 10, 1, all the way through, well, <laughs> 12. I'll read to 12, but you, could, you really shouldn't read the whole chapter of Daniel 10. But in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, D Daniel said a thing was revealed to him, and, uh, and the thing was true, but the time was long, and he understood the thing, he had an understanding of the vision, but he he, the timing, the timing, because uh, there's time and God will reveal something to you and that ain't the right time or whatever. But anyway, Daniel wanted to know more. And so he fasted and prayed to get more sensitive to the spiritual realm, because that's what fasting and praying does, y'all. It gets you more sensitive to the spiritual realm. So verse two, in those days, I, Daniel, mourned, that's fasting, for three full weeks, 21 days, that's where the Daniel fast comes from. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the month, 21 days later, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hittichel, then I lifted up my eyes and looked and behold, it was an angel. It was basically what it was. And he described the angel in verse six, his body was like burl, his face as the appearance of lightning, his eyes as a lamps of fire, his arms and feet like the color to polished breath, the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me didn't see the vision. They didn't get to see it. But a great quake, he fell upon them, so they, they ran to hide themselves. Verse eight. Therefore, I was left alone and saw this great vision. It was just the spiritual realm opened up to me and there remained no more strength in me. Oh my God, for my compliments, whatever he thought about himself was great. It just turned into corruption. He said, I had no strength. He, he said, oh Lord, I, whoo, Jesus, is what he basically said. Verse nine, yet heard I the voice of his words. And when I heard the voice of his words, then I was in a deep sleep on my face and my face towards the ground. He just passed on out. <laughs> and behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hand. And he said unto me, Oh, Daniel, now listen to this, y'all. This is why you wait. Oh, Daniel, he said. Verse 11, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he has spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. <laughs> you know, we, we, he, at this point, I just want to bring out something for you. 
when we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, or when it says fear the Lord, it's not with fear, it's with, oh my God, oh my God, oh, this is real. Oh my God, this is real. That kind of trembling, that kind of fear of the Lord. It's all true, y'all. It's all true. I'm not just saying that because I'm reading here. He has shown me. What Daniel was trembling, God had me trembling. Amen. Verse 12. Then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel. Now check this out. For from the first day, which was 21 days ago, that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. He said from the first day that in your heart you wanted to know and you fasted. And why did he fast? Because he wanted to be sensitive to God's spirit so he could be feel that spiritual, that, that spiritual realm. He said, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia, which was a principality, a devil, withstood me 21 days. So all that time, he told Daniel from the first day that you set your heart to understand, God sent me to, to bring you the, what you was looking for, the, the understanding. He says, but the devil fought me. For 21 days, the devil fought me. So that's why you wait on the Lord. Because when you have a sincere heart, I'm not talking about playing with God. When you have a sincere heart toward God, when you love him, you keep his commandments and you ask him something, the angels hasten to perform that word. But at the same time, devils is fighting them. So they don't want you actually to get to you. Now, how you either go help one side or the others. If you stay in faith and understand spiritual warfare, understand these things and give God the glory, praise him, praise the Lord. I'm not looking at the things where I've seen, but this, I got my eyes fixed on Jesus. I know, Lord God, what you promise you will do. I worship you. You wait patiently on the, on the Lord. You give strength to God. And the angels, literally, we all in the spiritual warfare. But if you start one, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, me fight my own battles, you give strength to the dark side. That's how it works. So uh, this is, uh, we out of time for our um, session. Uh, but but that's how it works. That's why, why we wait on the Lord. Because he's working things out. <laughs> so let's give him the power by giving him the glory and honor and thanks and trust him and everything instead of oh he ain't oh, all that doubt and unbelief you give power to the devil death and life is in the power of the tongue that's just bottom line that's what it is right there and that's why you wait on the Lord yeah, amen hallelujah did that answer your question digging us Holy Spirit is good ain't he he taught us real good he's, he's wonderful he's absolutely wonderful yes, you know, he's, he's, yes. I'm just I'm just simply a a vessel that God uses, just like us all. Praise God. But it's the Holy Spirit. He's the spirit of truth. He comes in to uh, teach us all things. He's our comforter. He reveals the word of God. He interprets the word of God. And Sister Diana got her answer. You know, Mary is highly venerated, but she is not God. She's not even an intercessor. Mary up in heaven, she ain't think about us. And she's so happy around God's throne. You know, Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us. Amen. Uh, and what was that other one? Oh, and the, the other question, the tabernacle. We're the tabernacles of God. We're the temples of the Most High God. He wants not just, he, he doesn't just want the Holy Spirit to dwell in us, but the fullness. All yeah. three, I showed you that in John. And not just that, but he wants his word to dwell in us. I'm telling you, it's, that's what it is. I love it. I love it. I love it. So hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to stop the recording. And then... Um,